It is what it is. Tinubu Subadin meetings sheds light on opposition's lack of reality. Now, wow. So, what is lack of reality in the opposition here? And what is so special about Tinubu meeting with Biden? Okay. Why is Biden and the United States, uh, you know, getting interested in Nigeria government at this moment? When Tinubu was uh, declared the winner, did they congratulate him? Biden did not congratulate Tinubu. When Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, came to Ghana, a visit other countries in West Africa, and uh, South Africa, did, he come, did she come to Nigeria? No. Since then, who among them has called Tinubu to say, well done or not well done? Now that there's a problem in Niger, and they're looking for an African country to fight uh, the war for them in proxy, they are now calling Tinubu. Now we have a case with a case that is involving Tinubu and Atiku in the U.S. concerning Tinubu's qualification. The U.S. is playing, uh, uh, playing politics with it. They are not saying anything about it. Okay, now the, all the APC members are happy now because Biden said he, he's calling Tinubu aside in the United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York to discuss with him. And, and uh, Tinubu is the only African president that Biden has inf invited for side talk on the in the UNGA meeting. Huh? And uh, what is good about it? Or what is going to come out of it? What does Tinubu know that he's going to say about it? That is the truth. And APC people are finding their embers and are happy now and are thinking that they have arrived and this this, this Tinubu now this is this is a, a plus for him. All right. Now wow propagandist not go good for them. Mm. It is what it is, is a commonly used phrase, okay, that conveys the idea that a situation or circumstance simply exists as it is and cannot be changed. Or altered. So the phrase implies that there is no need to overanalyze or try to change the situation because ultimately it cannot be different from what it currently is. It is a way of acknowledging the reality without attempting to uh, sugarcoat or alter it. Recent reports confirm that Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu is scheduled to hold discussions with the US President Joe Biden during the upcoming United Nations General Assembly in New York. In response to this news, some sectors of the public, notably those aligned with the opposition, have opted to remain silent. This silence is not due to lack of information, but rather stems from an aversion to accepting the truth. It is disheartening to observe that a significant number of individuals who are identified as obedient are entrenched in a state of self-deception incapable of recognizing the actuality of the situation. These individuals fail to grasp the underlying message of the phrase, it is what it is. Instead, they allow their perceptions to be clouded by their own narratives, refusing to acknowledge objective reality. This inability to see beyond their own fabricated belief is indeed regrettable. Can you imagine? So what this people are coming to tell us now is that Tinubu has arrived as president of Nigeria and it is what it is and we can't change it whether we go to tribunal or not. That is what I see in this article. That is what I see in what this guy is trying to write. And this is actually a very bad narrative. This person must be writing to defend APC, to defend Tinubu and to defend INEC. Okay? And trying to use the meeting that Biden is going to have with Tinubu as a yastic or basis to accept the fact that Tinubu has become president and nothing will change it, Abi. Because there's also a message here that Tinubu is the only African president that Biden wished to talk to individually, okay, during the United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York that is that's forthcoming. Okay, and so all this not accepting the reality, this APC uh, narrators are trying to link it with obedience and supporters of Peter Obi. So, so it is what it is. Tinubu is now the president of Nigeria and nothing will change it, Abi. It's all fallacy. Okay? It's all fallacy. The fact that adults can lead, can lead lives immersed, immersed in fantasy and delusion is truly disheartening. The opposition's um, winning has 
reached the point where it is time to move on. Hmm. It is what it is. Tunubu fought a worthy battle and emerged victorious. Now the position must accept it. No, he didn't win the battle. And what kind of battle? Okay. This is not a free and fair election. This is not what you call free and fair election. And we know with, with Tinubu's personality and with all that transpired, with all the electoral laws and policies that have been violated in Nigeria, anybody that participated in rigging this election should actually be in jail. And this election should actually be nullified and probably reconducted again. But unfortunately, unfortunately, Nigeria has entered one chance. It's a very bad one. It's a very bad one. Now, some people are reacting to this narrator um, saying, wrong, wrong, and wrong. President Biden's meeting with Tinubu cannot change anything. If Tinubu was not qualified to contest the presidential election in the first place, please go back and study the petition filed by Allied People's Movement against Tinubu, a petition which was being largely ignored. America is playing a high wire diplomacy with Biden Tinubu meeting. Sadly, most Nigerians don't understand that international diplomacy is never, uh, never takes side. It's a dicey political situation. Exactly. International diplomacy is that they, nobody should take any side, okay, and watch how things unfold. He didn't win election, and that Biden is going to speak with Tinubu does not change any situation as well, because Tinubu obviously, first of all, was not qualified to run the election. Secondly, did not win the election. Okay? Don't win the election. The black man and the slave mentality. It is only correct if America endorses even with manifest ills at home. <laughs> exactly. So because uh, Biden is a white man now and he's going to talk with Tinubu, all the APC members, including Tinubu himself, are now living in a fantasy world because a white man is going to talk to them. It's all about inferiority complex before a white man. And it's a very bad one. Just as the UK started inviting Abu Bakr Tafa, Balewad Namdi, Azikiwe, and Obafemi Awolowo, simultaneously gave Nigeria a name by themselves and 